So autism is basically a developmentally disorder um, for um, for social skills and communication. Well, I don't I don't have bad communication. Um, Jason is not afraid or shy to come down and, and ask questions or um, make statements. What I remember is me being able to take him on my own on my own car rides and him looking at me and just talking to me and asking where I was going or where we were going. I feel that Jason's communication skills have vastly improved over time because initially um, when we would have a conversation it would be very difficult to keep him on track because there would be certain things he was perseverating about and it would be hard for him to stay focused on what we initially wanted to focus on. Now it's like, you know, how are you feeling? How are your children doing? Are you feel, you know, just the... Oh, he's so good. <laughs> My hair was short when I had him and I had, it pulled back in a little ponytail one day and he walked through the door and he was like, Mrs. Perlmutter, that is a hair disaster. <laughs> he's everybody's muse. Story of Jason. When Jason was born, he was uh, a beautiful, happy baby. Um, and probably around 15, 16 months, we started to notice that his language wasn't coming in as we had expected. So we s decided to seek out some evaluations um, to see why there was a speech delay and to see if there were any concerns. And um, to our surprise, we realized that his speech delay was much more significant and concerning than we had ever expected. I was diagnosed with autism at a very young age, at 20 months, which was about uh, June of 2000, 14 years ago, almost 15 years ago. Even at 20 months, he was about 10 to 12 months delayed developmentally which meant he was practically back in the womb. I was nonverbal, I really didn't talk. Or I, I was flittering around and it was, it was, my f mom was very sad of how I was back then. And I was licking the walls at one point, it was, there were, I did gross things when I was 20 months old. One of the, the resources that I was able to use at the time was an online resource. It was actually um, a listserv uh, back when AOL and Prodigy were the only things around. And um, it was a listserv called the Me List based on Ivor Lovas's research in discrete trial teaching and applied behavior analysis for treatment for children with autism, which was a very popular treatment model at the time. And on this listserv were a lot of parents across the entire world working with their kids. Put with same. Put with same. Good, putting the same. Good boy, here you go. Good boy. We decided to go full force with applied behavior analysis because it seemed to be the most effective treatment for autism at the time. The services that Jason was given was about 20 sessions a week, uh, 90 minutes long. I first met Jason right around his second birthday. It was a few days before, a few days after, and he was an adorable, perfect little boy. Jason, say. The earliest memory I had was um, probably eating my first M&M and probably seeing, sitting in this house for the very first time. Stand feet. Back, stamping your feet. Clap hands. Stand I remember up. on the first day that he clapped hands in invitation and we were all thrilled. The very first session she said, do this. And then she gave me two mini M&Ms and then what I did, I did. That's what I did to get, keep getting those mini M&Ms. Good, what color is your shirt? It's red. It is red. What color is Tony's shirt? It's, it's blue. Yeah, man. Good boy. 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 Good boy.
I met Jason when he was about two and a half, almost three years old. Things were different in the beginning, you know, there wasn't, we were just sort of going into verbal behavior and changing things up. So Jason was really into his trains, he was into his own world, he was very, yeah, he wasn't going to go over and say hi to you as much as you picture this boy that you see today. You know, he would not have the words to ask for the things that he wanted and you know, he would get very frustrated and get a little aggressive at times and he was a different kid. A big part of my experience with Jason in the beginning was me trying to make him feel comfortable in my presence as well as challenge him because I found that a lot of his frustration was that he wasn't able to communicate. Um, it wasn't just that he wasn't using words, he didn't have the sounds to form the, ver the words. So what we did is that I used play and play therapy to me can be structured and it can also be more free. I would say that um, my speech teacher when I was younger was a great superhero to me because um, she was able to teach me how to speak and I said, and my first words I think with her were, tow truck. I stumbled upon uh, verbal behavior which is part of behavior analysis, just like any other science. There's lots of splinters and divisions of a science. And it seemed really interesting to me because there was a huge focus on, on language and language being the focus of uh, motivation. Uh, motivation being key in teaching children with language disorders and autism to acquire sounds and labels and words. What shape is a marble? A wow, you got it! So, this is a book that I've always kept with me. It's the first year of Jason's intensive ABA program and it's the first time I've looked at it in probably about 10 years. And it's amazing the, all the tiny little skills that we were teaching him. Uh, over the past 14 years, every single skill that he's acquired over those years, we had to painstakingly break it down into small components and teach it to him. We were able to get a program started in our school district uh, with a wonderful consultant, an incredibly talented uh, kindergarten teacher who had a lot of experience working with children with autism. He was always able to express wants and needs. Um, I think his social language was probably where he exhibited the most difficulty. He had very strong academic skills and was able to use his language um, where academics were concerned, but it was really interacting with his peers and appropriately with the staff members, um, which is what he required the most work with. When Jason transitioned into middle school, we had some re reappearance of some of the behaviors that he used to engage in. He started walking through the hallways with his shoulder in his ear, not looking up. Um, it seemed like some of his confidence was lacking. He's not used to several things and I decided to switch to self-contained classes and they were much easier. It couldn't have been a better decision. Um, he became uh, immediately thrilled and happy about being in that environment. Um, he excelled academically. Um, he even learned to be more independent and we were able to fade out his needed, much needed one-to-one -one supports so quickly from those environments because he was able to um, have less distraction and attend to the environment. The first year, there was a lot of anxiety um, in his voice whenever we had conversations. It was almost everything had to be hurried um, and he dictated the conversation or most of the conversation or at least tried to. Um, now it's not so much. Now I definitely see more of a give and take. Um, which is important, obviously, um, going forward. 
Um, and he's able to listen and not have to dominate the, the conversation. I think by navigating his high school career in general, it's presented such opportunities for growth across all aspects of his development. The most important component um, for Jason's success was having that one-to-one -one support in the classroom. What I've learned from him in terms of, and then passing it on to the other adults that have to work with our students, because I find out that's the, the difficulty sometimes. Um, I'm pro-student no matter who the student is, so for me, I'm always going to try to find out what we need to do to have kids be successful. Um, but I think getting the adults to kind of open their eyes a little more and see how different kids are and that we have to kind of alter what we do to, to help them be successful and, and overlook some things that may happen in a classroom and, and don't give them too much credence and, and, and focus on the important things, which is just having students constantly move forward and, and be more successful. Slowly begin to breathe in through your nose and then out through your mouth. One. So my ABA today is um, that my instructor uses a program called Catalyst which is very technological and very specific and I have to follow programs and it's all real life application. Learn how to cook, try new things, exercise. I've been trying apples, pears and bananas. And apples and pears are my two favorite fruits, and bananas I puke my brains out when I eat it. I really dislike bananas. We only hope that continuing going forward, that although we're not doing discrete trials, sitting at a table and chair and doing intensive teaching instruction like we were doing with the big knob puzzles, we do hope that we're able to incorporate it in a more naturalistic way and support him in all the environments that he's going to be seeing in the future, such as college, getting his first job, being in a relationship, maybe getting married and, you know, growing up and being an adult. And that's really what our hopes and dreams are, that he would be able to continue to see this support system as something that he can utilize for the rest of his life. I mean, for me to see where he was and the process through the years and where he landed is just, I mean, I don't think you could wish for anything more. He really has come so far. And it's, for me, it's like such a proud moment to see him where he is. He just, it's why I do what I do. He is the reason.